Hi there, welcome to this video with Vue.js and Firebase. What I'm gonna show you in this video is how we can make this create, retrieve, update, delete application. It simply allows us to add a person. We can then edit them. We can change the name to be something like Kate. We can save that, but also we can cancel, we can remove and add as many people as we want. That's all coming up in this video. And if you like this video, let me know inside of the comment section below. Let's get started. So let's dive in and create an application with Vue and Firebase. To get started, let's install the Vue CLI by saying npm install Vue-CLI-G. This will install this globally on your machine, and then you'll be able to access the Vue CLI by simply saying Vue. Let's create a new project with the Vue CLI by saying Vue init based on the webpack-simple template and I'll call this vFire. This should go ahead and download the template and then we'll have the wizard. This asks us for a project name and we'll call our project name vFire. A description will simply be a create, retrieve, update, delete application with Vue and Firebase. The author is myself. And at this moment in time, we will not be using SAS. So we've generated a new project named vFire. We can then CD into that directory and we can run npm install to install any dependencies. So far, so good. We now need to install Firebase using npm install Firebase and ViewFire. ViewFire simply allows us to use Firebase inside of our Vue applications with some nice bindings. So once we've done that, that's all the setup we need to do. We can simply run our application using npm run dev, and I'm also gonna open this up inside of Visual Studio Code. If you've done everything correctly so far, you should then be able to see your Vue.js application here on screen, and also inside of our app.view, which is in the source folder, we'll be removing everything inside this div tag. So let's remove everything except the div. Inside of our export default, I'll simply be leaving the data for now. And you know what? I think I'll keep the styles. I might change and add a style for a button because we will be using a button. I'll perhaps give this a background color of transparent. And I think we'll give this a border of two pixels solid black. So you should have an empty screen, but we are gonna keep the styling. You can delete the styling if you want, as you may be using your own styling at this point. Not too important for Firebase integration, but the next thing to do is of course integrate Firebase. So let's get the Firebase API keys that we need for our project. The first step is of course to head over to firebase.google.com and this will allow you to then sign in with your Google account by hitting go to console and creating your first, or maybe not first, Firebase project. Let's hit add project. And when the pop-up comes up, I'm simply going to type Firebase view. And of course my country slash region is the United Kingdom. So we can hit create project and then we'll get the Firebase dashboard. Awesome, we're now on the Firebase dashboard and we are greeted with add Firebase to your iOS app, Android app and web app. Simply select web app to continue and this will give you your API key. When you do select add Firebase to your web app, you should then get a script which allows us to initialize Firebase. The only thing we need from this script here is just this JavaScript object. Let's copy this, the things that contain the API key the auth domain, the database URL, and so on. So we'll copy this into our application. And the way we'll be getting it into our application is by making a new file under source called firebase.js. And this is going to be a very simple file. We'll simply import from Firebase. And the thing I want is initialize app. This allows us to make an app by saying const app is equal to initialize app and pass in that information. So we should have things like your API key, auth domain, database URL, and so on. We may want to export a reference in this file. We don't have to, but we could. We could also export a database for us to use throughout the project. So some examples 
would be something like this. If we export the database as a constant, that would be equal to the app.database. And perhaps we were creating a list of names. We could export a constant with the names ref equal to db.ref and that will point that at names. Your implementation might be different. It's just a way to access the names reference throughout our application, as we only have one reference at this point, and this will come to make sense in a moment. The final thing to do as far as setting up Firebase in our project is to head over to main.js and simply import Firebase. And what that'll do is it'll import the Firebase initialize app function. It will allow us to then initialize the app and use Firebase throughout our project. The other thing we need to do is import Viewfire from Viewfire. And we can add it to view as a plugin. So we can simply say view.use Viewfire. After that, everything is completely set up and configured with Firebase. Our journey then heads across to app.view, and this is essentially the file that we're seeing on screen at the moment. It's obviously blank, but that's going to change when we add some content. So let's start off by adding a div inside of our div with the ID of app. This is where view is registered, and I'm simply going to add a label in here. The label is going to say name, and then we'll have an input. The input will be of type text, and we'll have a button. The button will simply say add. So when we save the file, you'll see that we have name in input box and the ability to add this specific name. So thankfully with Vue, we don't really need to do much to hook this up to Firebase. All we need to do is add a V dash model to our input and we'll simply add name to that. This will capture the value of the input and store it in a variable named name. If we wanted to, we could simply add something to our data saying name, and we could have a default value, for example, of Paul. You can then see that this does automatically fill our input box. And let's say we wanted to submit this name to Firebase, so then we could view the name on screen. Well, we could do that if we add a methods, and for our methods, we could have a function called submit name. So at this point in time, we need to capture a reference to our Firebase database. Well, we already exported this with db and the names reference. So at this point in time, you could either import from Firebase, and do remember that's our Firebase script file, either db or our names ref. I'm going to import the names ref, and I'm simply going to say names ref dot push. And at this point in time, I'm going to have the name equal to this dot name, and I'm also going to add an edit to false. Now you could handle the editing on the client side, but I'm going to handle it on Firebase for now, just because I want to show things like update and set as we get further on into the video. So at this moment in time, we have name and edit. When the user clicks this button, I want to fire this submit name function. So let's add an at sign and say click equals submit name. This should be all we need to actually submit the name to our Firebase database. If we were to hit add, it should add this to the database. But as you can see, at this moment in time, we have a permission denied error. And this is one of the things about Firebase is that we do need to declare some security rules or we need to be authenticated. So let's head back over to our Firebase dashboards and under the database, we can select rules. And here I'm simply going to change read and write to be true on both occasions. If we hit publish, you should see that your security rules are now defined as public and anybody can read or write to your database. This is something you keep in mind if you're going to push this to production. Please don't. Make sure that you have your rules sorted out. So if we then select data, any data that we push up to our database should appear in this tab. So now if we hit the add button inside of our application, notice that we get no console error. 
If we then look on our Firebase dashboard, we can see names, and this has a new ID. And we can see that we're currently editing equal to false and name equal to poll. Like I said, I would usually handle the edit on the client side, but at this point in time, we're simply adding it on the server. So we've got the ability to add a name. I now want to see this name on screen. So thankfully with view and view fire, this is an easy thing. So all we need to do is add a Firebase object and we could set the names equal to our names ref. Next, inside of our HTML, I'm going to add another div. This time it's going to contain a UL and an LI. And we'll add a V4 for a for loop. I could have the person name of names. We'll also bind the current key to the person name dot key. This is simply the current key of this person inside of our Firebase database. If we then display this on screen by saying person name, you can then see that we have edit equal to false, name equal to poll, and then of course our key. So if we simply wanted to display the name, we could say person name dot name. So now you can see that we can add as many people as we want to this list. If we were to add Kate and hit add, we'd get another person inside of our list. Let's get rid of the li display inline block. And now for each one of these people, I want to add a button for us to remove them from the list. So I'm going to surround the person name in a paragraph tag. And I will give this a button with the click event of remove person. We can pass in the person name and that person's key. All we need to do now is simply add a remove bit of text to the button. And inside of our methods, we can add a new method named remove name. And if we had the key as a parameter, we can capture the names reference, the child being the key, and simply use the remove method. Once we save this, and we now select remove, it should remove somebody, but we haven't actually named this correctly. Let's change this to remove name. And once we select a person now, it removes it from the list. We could then add that back and remove them and so on. When we add somebody to the list, we could also say this dot name is equal to a simple empty string. And this would remove it from the text box. Let's also get rid of the default value of poll. And if we were to add poll once again, you'd see that it goes here and our text box is now removed. So what's next? Now we need an edit button. Let's also add a button with the text of edit and the click event of edit name and we'll pass in the person name as well as that key. So now we get the key if we elect to edit this person and if we had edit name, and in fact, what I'm going to say is set edit name, because this will simply set the edit equal to true on our server side. We'll pass in that key and we'll say the name reference dot child will be that key. And all I want to do at this point is simply update. And what update does is it takes the current nodes and only updates what we want to update. So it won't update everything, it won't remove everything and simply leave edit equal to true. It will simply only update the edit key. 
So if we save this, and we liked to hit edit, we need to spell names ref correctly first. But when we do that, we should then be able to see on our server side, edit becomes true. When edit becomes true, I want to display a text box with the value of Paul or whatever the current name is. And the way that this is going to work is I'm going to surround the current content here inside of a div. And if you've dealt with Angular before, you should know this one off by heart. We're going to use a VF and a V else. So this one here is going to be a VF. The person name does not have edit equal to true. So if we're not currently editing, then I just want to show a standard version in which we can elect to either remove the person or edit that person. We can create another div, but this time with the v-else directive. And this time we can have an input box with the type of text and the v-model equal to the person name dot name. Notice that the person's name that we are currently editing has now appeared. And I want a button to save the edit and also a button to cancel the edit just like that. So we need two more functions. The first with the click event of save edit for that person name. But notice how this time I'm not going to pass through the key. I'm passing through the person name so that we can elect to capture the key, but also we can update the field to include that person's name. For the click event for our cancel edit, I kind of like to simply only pass through the key because that's all we need. Let's start off with the cancel edit first. So let's have a cancel edit and that will be the key. All we need to do at this point is say names ref, pass in the child key again and update the fact that we are no longer editing. So if we click cancel, you can see we're no longer editing and this works no matter how many people that we actually click. And the final thing to do is, of course, save the edit. So we can make a new function named save edit. But this one will be the name. And for this, we can use another function that we haven't looked at yet. We could use update once again, but we could also use set. Now set overwrites the current object. So instead of simply updating the keys within the object, it will overwrite the object. So how do we capture the key? Well, of course, the key is the name and it's the dot key inside of that object. We want to then set a new object, which has the name and that is name dot name. So we could change this to be person and perhaps we want to refactor our application. So we are now looking at the name of the person and we also want edit equal to false because we no longer want to edit that person. So this now should allow us to save those edits. So if we edit this, we change this to instead be Barry and we click save. You can now see that instead of Paul, we now get Barry. We can edit, we can cancel, we can remove and so on. So there are ways to make this less verbose, but I do think that for the time that was spent, we have certainly got a powerful view application that interacts with Firebase, Viewfire, and so on. So that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io for more courses and free content. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. And until next time, I'll see you very soon in that next video.